Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and um, I wanted to, uh, to bring out this video, and I'm going to be doing a comparison of a couple of radios we'll see here in a minute. But what I've been working on for uh, pretty much the past year and a half, I've been licensed for a little over two years, but probably at least the last year and a half, uh, I've wanted to be able to reach uh, the repeater that my main club uses, and it's about 80 miles away from uh, from the house here. Uh, you can see here in Google Maps with a, a straight line measurement, pretty close to 80 miles uh, if I was exactly on the repeater site in my house. Uh, that's a pretty good haul for two meters. And I wanted to be able to hit that repeater, check in on our nets um, as a base station. Now, as a club, we do run Echo Link, and uh, that's a great feature to have. But, uh, you know, I just, as a personal challenge, I wanted to try to come up with a configuration of hardware, antenna, and so forth that would allow me to, uh, to operate as a, as a base station. And I knew it was a challenge, but, uh, you know, I figured, hey, I can have some fun, play with some equipment, and... Uh, for me, at least, that's a big part of what amateur radio is about, is the am amateur science behind that. We can do things and test things, uh, you know, maybe not in an ultra-scientific way, but in a, a reasonable way, and try to figure out what kind of results we want or what are the best results. So that's, uh, that's what we're going to be going over some of today. Uh, so what I have, uh, I've still got the six-element Yagi. Uh, it's up on the new uh, uh, steel mast. Uh, it's not at its final height, but it's probably 25 feet or so, about where it was on the temporary mast, uh, if you've seen that video for testing. And uh, I've got a couple of radios now. The FT991A that I normally run I had to go back into the shop. So my main uh, good, nice 2-meter, uh, 70-centimeter radio uh, left the house. <laughs> and uh, I have a couple of the... Uh, the less expensive Chinese type radios. I have the Baofeng 25X4, 25 watt uh, quad man radio, and I also have a Talk Coupe uh, 8900D, which is uh, kind of a rip off of one of the, the other Chinese radios. Uh, and they're actually, you know, decent radios. You know, the, the old saying, for the money, uh, for not that much money, uh, the Tall Coupe is a dual band radio, the Baofeng is quad band, although here in the United States it's, it's effectively a tri band. has the 1.25 meter as well as the regular 2 meter, 70 centimeter. Um, you know, for the money, they're, they're decent radios, 25 watts each, and what's kind of nice about those, those little radios, they're not that expensive, they work uh, decently well. You know, depending on your, your location and antenna, 30 miles, 40 miles, uh, I was able to hit a repeater 30, 35 miles away with a decent uh, J-pole. Again, up yeah, maybe 20, 25 feet. Uh, but they're, they don't have the greatest front ends. Um, but what's also kind of nice about them is they don't take extreme power either since they're limited to 25 watts. So you can usually use the 12-volt adapter plugs, you know, cigarette lighter plugs, in a vehicle. You don't necessarily have to run straight to the battery or anything. So they're fairly inexpensive, pretty easy to install. And pretty easy to, uh, to use, uh, pretty easy to program, uh, you know, Chirp uh, is usually compatible with most of those styles of, of radio, so you got some free software that, that works well. But I wanted to step up from that in the car, and uh, of course I got the, um, the Anytone 578 that we'll, uh, we're looking at uh, here in a minute. And, um, you know, the, uh, the official name, the, the AT-D578 UV3 Pro. <laughs> tri-band radio, but it's a 50 watt radio, so it needs a little more power than a cigarette lighter can provide. And I also recently decided to get the uh, ICOM ID5100A, another nice 50 watt radio. Uh, both of these very nice radios, very nice feature sets. And so I thought, well, before I get things completely permanently where they're going to live, let me do a test. Because one of the things I decided I, I wanted to have was a, a nice a little bit more powerful, uh, you know, backup radio in the shack for the two meter, you know, 70 centimeter kind of stuff typically. 
and uh, so I got the uh, the ICOM. But the more I've, I've learned about the ICOM, and it's still pretty new for me, is I'm thinking it's actually going to be better in the car, and I'm, th I'm thinking I'll go ahead and move this uh, AT578 back into the shack. Now, I like the 570. I like both these radios. They're, they're kind of different, as we'll see, uh, as we saw in the pictures, but uh, I really like both of them for, for all kinds of different reasons. Uh, you know, one thing I do like about the Anytone is that it's tri-band. It does have that 1.25 uh, band in there, the 220 frequency. But, you know, it's not like I use that a lot. Uh, the Anytone is DMR, so it's a form of digital radio. The ICOM is D-Star, another form of digital. Uh, of course, the uh, Yesu FT991 Alpha is C4FM. So I'm actually going to have uh, three of, of the, the main uh, types of digital available, and I'll probably get a hotspot here in the in the shack to help me uh, be able to work around some of the different digital bands while I'm here. But when I got to think about what do I actually really need or want in the car, well, I wanted a nicer, more powerful radio. Either one of these fit the bill. Uh, but as I've looked into the five, uh, the 5100A, that enormous screen, that's touch screen, and when you get into using it and navigating menus, and, and the thing that stuck out to me was probably two main things. On the fly changes, and it has a couple of abilities. Uh, both of these radios have GPS and, and can do things like APRS. Uh, the, the ICOM has a built-in, very quick to access ability to find the nearest repeater. You can, of course, program these uh, with, with software. Uh, load, uh, the ICOM has, uh, also has the SD card slot so you can load things up. And I do travel for work or, or used to and, uh, and may get back to that. Um, but it would be nice, you know, if I'm out someplace, maybe on a camping trip or whatever it is, or visiting family, uh, which we still do sometimes, to be able to say, hey, wherever I am right now, What's the nearest repeater, whether it's analog or digital? And it's just the um, the usability of the ICOM is simpler to do. And I think with that enormous screen, it'll just be better in the car. With the uh, Anytone, again, it's a great radio, and you can pre-program it. But doing things on the fly through either the mic and, and the front screen, uh, it's a smaller screen. It's a nice color screen, uh, but it's not touch screen. Uh, it's just not as easy to do things on the fly with that radio. So having it in the car, I felt, was not going to be as advantageous. So I've pretty well, especially after this testing we're going to see here, pretty well come to the conclusion I'm going to put the uh, ICOM in the car. I'm going to bring the 87, uh, 578 back into the house. And I think I'm going to be happy with both of those radios. Uh, and I think that will put them in a location that suits their strength, with the Anytone in the shack and the ICOM in the, in the car. So I just wanted to, uh, to show that a little bit. Uh, we've, I've got some contacts that I made. One is a, a local repeater here near where I live. That's only, I think, seven, maybe eight miles away, but it's up on a tall building. So everybody for 30, 40 miles can hit it pretty well, typically. And then the other one is the repeater for uh, my club as we saw on the map there at the beginning. Uh, and it's from here about 80 miles probably. And that's uh, as the crow flies, as uh, we say here in the, in the country. So um, without any further ado, let's listen to a couple of these contacts I made at each location with each radio. And then we'll wrap things up in the final segment. KY4CKP testing new radio. Is anybody available for a quick signal report? Yeah, the call is KY4CKP. Uh, handle here is Chris. I've got the uh, ICOM ID5100 Alpha and uh, just uh, doing a little bit of testing with some of the area repeaters and uh, trying to uh, get a couple of reports to see how I sound. Hey, Chris, it's a fine radio. Uh, the only thing that kept me from buying that radio was the fact that ICOM would not supply a mobile mounting bracket. So I'll take that up with them after the pandemic's over. Roger, Roger, you're sounding good as well. Um, so 
Uh, don't want to take up your time just doing some quick signal reports and uh, uh, making a quick uh, video for YouTube as well. So this is KY4CKP. Uh, thanks again, and I'll be clear on your final. KY4CKP testing uh, radio. Is anybody available for a quick signal report? KY4CKP, W4IOD, you're loud and clear, Chris. All right, well, thanks for coming back to me. Uh, this is the um, Anytone AT D 578 UV3 Pro, worst, uh, worst name ever, probably. Uh, but I'm comparing it to the uh, ICOM. ID5100A that I was on a little bit earlier, and I've still got the six element Yagi pointing down towards uh, just west of Somerset. So, uh, yeah, just getting a couple more signal reports to compare the two radios. So, I appreciate the comeback. Well, I think you're a little clearer over on the ICOM, you're a little louder over here on the uh, Anytone, and I wouldn't want to say that fast three times, uh, but uh, you're perfectly readable uh, here in Lexington. Yeah, the, uh, the repeater there is not too far away from me, and um, there's probably a couple settings I can tweak on either one of these radios that may adjust the, uh, the sound quality a little bit. I'll have to look into that. But I do appreciate the comeback. Uh, this is KY4CKP, and, and what was your call sign again? W4IOD, Whiskey 4, India, Oscar Delta. I'm an old dude. Uh, the name is Otis Os uh, Oscar... I'll spit it out in a minute. Oscar Delta, India, Sierra. Everyone calls me Odie. QSL? QSL. All right. Well, again, thanks for coming back. Again, this is uh, Chris here, KY4CKP. And uh, just doing another quick check here. Appreciate it. And uh, I'll be clear on your final. All right, Chris. Doing the work thing today, 10 hours. Uh, so we just had the HT on us actually outside taking a break. So we don't have the mask on this time. So hopefully the voice sounds a little better. We'll try not to muff your call. Uh, KY4CKP, W4IOD, Lexington, Kentucky, on the Kenwood HT, 73. KY4CKP testing. Uh, WM4LM, do you have uh, your ears on this morning? Yeah, good morning. Just... Um, Doing some testing between the uh, ICOM ID5100A, like Don has there, and uh, going to do a little bit of testing with the AT578 as well. So just uh, recording some footage, and just needed to uh, get a uh, signal check uh, from somebody down that way, and I'm going to test a couple of repeaters up this way as well. So uh, how am I sounding today? All right, yeah, I've, I've got a little bit of noise with you, but that's typically the case uh, up here anyway. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this test. Uh, thanks for coming back. I'll be uh, back on a little bit later with the, uh, the AT578, and uh, we'll do a quick test in as well if, uh, if you're around, or hopefully I'll find somebody. So this is KY4CKP, and I'll be uh, clear on your final. KY4CKP testing the Anytone radio. Is anybody available for a signal report? Uh, maybe WM4LM? KO4EOL. KO4EOL. This is uh, Chris up here in Lexington testing the AT D 578 UV3 Pro. Longest name ever for a radio, I'm sure. Uh, just checking. Uh, uh, check with Miss Wanda earlier how I was coming into Somerset with the uh, ICOM ID 5100A, and now I'm checking this Anytone. So, just uh, trying to get a feel for how I sound down there. Yeah, that's got to be the longest name for a radio I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, you're coming in loud and clear. There's just a, there's a little scratch on it, but you're uh, perfectly readable, uh, and your scale you're almost full scale. So, yeah, you sound good. 
Yeah, and I've got just a little bit of noise with you, but again, uh, perfectly uh, easy copy. Uh, and it's about the best I can do right now with this antenna and at the height that it is. I might get it up a little higher later. All right, well, I'm just doing a quick signal report. I appreciate you coming back to me. Uh, this is KY4CKP, and I'll be clear on your final. All right, Chris, no problem there. I, yeah, I just was scanning around there and uh, happened to hear you call. So you have a good day, man. Have fun playing with the radio. This is KO4EOL Mobile. All right, folks, we'll go ahead and wrap things up here in the final segment. You know, both these radios are very nice radios. I think they're pretty comparable in, in many ways. Uh, they've got their, their kind of pros and cons. Uh, they both do a form of digital, which is, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, so you kind of have your choice there as well. Now there's a third radio option that I didn't talk about in this video, but I'll just talk about it a little bit here at the end because it was a serious contender in the thought processes that I've been doing. And that is the Yaesu FTM 400 XDR. And I know several people that have it. Uh, KY4 BDP Brian has one. And those are really nice radios, too. And, I, again, I would put them right here in the same class as these. Uh, Yaesu, good brand. Icom, good brand. I think the Anytones have proven to be a, a good brand. So uh, it, it's another radio for consideration. All three of these do a form of digital, whether it's D-Star, DMR, or C4FM. Uh, they all do at least dual band, uh, one of those, the Anytones tri-band. They're all 50 watts. Uh, they're just all going to be nice choices. So you've got two with larger screens and touch screens. One's a smaller screen, but it is nice in color. Uh, again, there's some trade-offs there, but it would also be an interesting choice for somebody. You know, So if you're doing research on mobile or even a shack uh, radio for 2 meter, 70 centimeter, and you're not ready to step up to the ICOM 9700, <laughs> which is, I'm sure, a very nice uh, 2 meter, 70 centimeter and, uh, and plus uh, shack radio, a mobile radio can serve the, the role of shack radio uh, very well, and I think it is uh, going to for myself. Uh, you know, once I get the 991 back, I'm sure it'll work fine. The HF has always worked fine. It's been the two meters and uh, some things that have had a little bit of an issue. But now I'll have a nice backup. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one. You've got some good choices out there. I think any of, of those three and any of these two would be a good choice for folks. And a little bit of a comparison there. I think the ICOM's a little bit simpler and easier to use uh, actually in the field or on the road. And I think that the, um, the, uh, the Anytone is certainly is a great shack radio. You know, because one of the ways I, I have used it and will continue is I can have its USB programming cable plugged in all the time. And anytime I want to make a change to it, I can just open that software, make a change, uh, upload to the radio. And I don't have to worry about diving into the, uh, the menus and, and using the keys on the mic. Not that you can't do that for a fair number of features, but I think it's a little bit simpler if you just use the programming software like it is with a lot of radios. And it'll be convenient to do that, uh, having it here as a shack radio. So that'll wrap it up. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, 73. <laughs>